Hello, boys, you need help. I'm your owner. 我是 The Boy CP. Hello. What's good, everybody? This is CP, and welcome back to my NBA fantasy series. I'm here to identify potential sleepers and undervalued players that have a chance to break out or outplay their draft positions. If you haven't watched my last three videos yet, please do so with the link below, so you can equip yourself with 25 more potential undervalued players to add to your watch list. Today, we will take a look at the Northwest Division. And identify one player from each team that you should keep an eye on for this upcoming season. So without further ado, let's get it. Many people expected Jamal Murray to have a major breakout season last year, but he didn't really knock things out of the ballpark. Murray had a very tough start and was cold early on, but played a lot better in the second half of the year. In the end, he averaged 16.7 points, 3.4 assists, 3.7 rebounds, and around two trays per game. He also finished the season as a top 60 fantasy player. Overall, it was a nice increase from his rookie numbers. But coming into 2018-19, it looks like he has the potential to put up even better stats across the board. According to CBS Fantasy Rankings, Murray is currently ranked 23rd amongst point guards in the NBA, which is extremely low when you consider the upside and potential he has. It seems like a lot of people are overlooking him this year. Perhaps a lot of that has to do with the hype surrounding last year's rookies and their impressive numbers. But we can't forget that Murray is only 21 and is around the same age as those young stars. He's also a very dynamic shooter who can put up impressive stats when he's hot. Overall, being able to find consistency in his game will be key. Assuming he is able to do that, a 25 and 5 stat line along with around 2.5 trays per game should be a reasonable goal for him to reach next year. Realistically speaking, Murray definitely has the tools to be a top 50 fantasy player and a top 10 point guard next year. So if you miss out on a player like Ben Simmons, Donovan Mitchell, or even Lonzo Ball, it might not be such a bad thing. Especially if Murray is still available in the later rounds, since the payoff and potential for him to outplay his draft position will be a lot higher than those other players. Gorgi Jang's fantasy value took a huge hit last year. We saw him average only 5.9 points, 4.6 rebounds, and around half a block a game. It was a huge drop off from the 10 points, 8 rebounds, and one block he averaged for three straight seasons. A lot of that had to do with Taj Gibson joining the T Wolves and taking Jang out of the starting rotation. Gibson averaged almost 33 minutes a night, while Jang's minutes diminished to 16.9. Needless to say, Jang's fantasy stock is at an all-time low, and you can likely have him for 20 cents on the dollar in most of your drafts. Heading into 2018-19, this is a great buy low opportunity on him, especially if you believe he is able to have a bounce back year, which is quite possible considering that he is only 28 and he looks like he can play at a high level for at least one to two more years. The Timberwolves still owe him another 48 million for three. Three more years, and it looks like they will probably try to trade him some point down the road. So it's possible that they might try the pump and dump strategy and give Jang a slight increase in minutes. At the same time, Gibson will be turning 34 next year, so the Timberwolves might decide to shave off a bit of his minutes so he's well rested for the final stretch. Overall, Jang has potential to give you late round value. He can block shots, grab rebounds, and give you a decent field goal percentage, which are stats that are hard to find on the waiver wire, especially later in the season. Jeremy Grant is heading into his fifth NBA season, and with the departure of Carmelo, he looks like he will finally get a chance to become a starter in Oklahoma. There is plenty of upside in this game, and his per 36 minutes stats with the Thunder are pretty decent. We saw him average almost 15.7 rebounds, two blocks, one steal, and over 53% shooting. Grant's position flexibility also makes him more valuable than your typical power forward, as he can play anywhere from the three to the five. Shooting has been an issue for him in the past, but it looks like he has been working really hard on his shot this summer. So we will see if the hard work pays off for him this upcoming season. According to ESPN Fantasy Rankings, he is currently ranked the 32nd best small forward. But with potential to get a huge bump up in minutes, along with his position versatility, Grant has a chance to break the top 20 this year. If you need an undervalued Swiss Army knife type of player who has a chance to score in double digits and be a top 30 player in steals and blocks, Grant should be on your watch list on draft day. 
Fantasy players are usually ranked very low if they were either injured or limited to very few games in their prior season. That's the case with Seth Curry. He missed the entire 2017-18 campaign in Dallas due to a tibia injury. It's quite unfortunate as many people expected him to build on the career year he had a couple seasons ago. In 2016-17, Curry averaged 12.8 points in 29 minutes a game and shot 42.5% from beyond the arc. Over the summer, Curry decided to take his talents to Portland. With a lot of time to recover, we should expect Curry to pick up from where he left off at the end of 2017. This is the first time in his career where he will be joining an explosive backcourt that features Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum, who are both elite scorers and can create easy shots for their teammates. Curry should fit in seamlessly on a Portland backcourt that features another great shooter in Sauce Castile. He is currently slotted in as the backup point guard but will likely see time on the floor with both Lillard or McCollum throughout the season. According to ESPN, he is ranked 104th amongst point guards, but we shouldn't sleep on him as he might turn out to be one of the most efficient scorers off the bench this season. If Curry is able to build from where he left off in 2017, he could be cooking with the sauce in Portland this season. I could see him hitting new career highs and averaging around 14 points, 3.5 assists, 1 steal and 2 threes a night. Dante Exum is another player who played limited games last year and can likely be had with a late round pick or a waiver wire pickup in most 10 to 12 team leagues this year. He was only limited to 14 games last season and despite averaging fewer minutes we did see some improvements in his points, steals and assist numbers. The Jazz also signed a 23 year old to a 3 year $33 million extension this summer, so it looks like they believe he is still a part of Utah's future. As a result, we should see the Jazz give him plenty of opportunities to succeed and perhaps even a chance for him to become the successor of Ricky Rubio's role as the team's starting point guard. But now he will likely be delegated to backup duties and a primary role on the team's second unit to start the new season. Last year was a small sample size, but Exum's per 36 minute stats were pretty decent. He averaged around 18.6 assists, 4 rebounds, and 1 steal. So even if Exum is able to get around 20 to 25 minutes a night, he should be able to set new career highs in points, rebounds, assists, and steals this upcoming season. Overall, if he is able to stay healthy, Exum will be an interesting pickup with potential to significantly outplay his pre-draft rankings in 2019. So that's a look at 5 more players you could add to your fantasy watch list. And if you have been enjoying my fantasy series, please show me some love by liking, sharing, or subscribing. And also feel free to comment below if you agree or disagree with any of my picks. And that's it for today, I'll see everybody next time.